Okay, 1550, again, I have to say this wouldn't have happened without Netix support, so thank you very much. I'm going to talk about calf pneumonia today. Um, it's a little bit chaotic in my house. This is the reality of doing videos when uh, the house is full of kids on a Saturday morning. But here we go. This is what we're, this is, this is it. So if the background noise is screaming kids, don't worry. Calf pneumonia. Um, so if you think about pneumonia and cattle in general, what is it? And again, look, it's unfortunately times when we're all thinking about these diseases more, pneumonia itself. Um, you know, what is pneumonia? I suppose it's, it's, if you look at our airways down into our lungs, it's when we have these viruses or bacteria um, or parasites invading the lungs, causing inflammation. And that inflammation is what we term pneumonia. Now, that inflammation within the lungs itself can affect the capacity of the lungs to function. And as we all know, the lungs are one of the most amazing organs in the body, probably after the heart and the brain, number three. And they're taking oxygen from the blood. Um, and you know, the capacity for oxygen to come out of the blood is really Reduced. And if that capacity comes down, the functioning of our, our cattle and our sheep um, is going to be reduced and performance is going to be severely affected. If that pneumonia is severe, it can lead to death. So we really need to get a handle on how we can control pneumonia. So a lot of the, when the viruses and bacteria invade, and often it's viruses can be first time and then we have secondary bacterial infection. You must remember in cattle in particular and sheep, a lot of the bacteria are there anyway and they proliferate under the, uh, the conditions that are favourable for them. Uh, do the lungs heal? Um, no, and a lot of the a lot of the issues with, with with our calves getting pneumonia is you get scarring on the lungs, which reduces down that uh, capacity again to to take in oxygen. Um, so. Inflammation of the lungs, we don't want it to happen. Uh, bacterial pneumonia tends to be more severe, but it can be a consequence of viral pneumonia. Um, and I suppose, why are cattle more prone than other animals? They have smaller lungs per capacity of their body. So they've quite, and the more muscle the animals have, and the smaller they are. So it's quite small lungs uh, to do a lot of work. What are the symptoms of pneumonia in cattle? Okay, I always talk about the nostrils being the gateway to the lungs. So if you have snotty noses, you have green, you know, runny, watery noses, watery, green, snotty eyes, ears down. I'm just talking about visually looking at calves, watching calves. I love watching normal animals because you get so good then at spotting the abnormal. Increased respiratory rates, we call blowing or you know that that, that increased rate uh, in calves. Uh, you know if you want to look at an important tool on farm the thermometer to get the temperature. So that temperature of the calf, uh, what is it? It shouldn't be over 39 and a half. Again you, it's a really useful tool. So we're starting to put all these things together. Now if we get good at spotting pneumonia we talk about treatments the quicker we spot any disease and implement treatment the better. It's all about preventing it but of course you're going to get occasionally uh, sometimes we get animals. So what causes pneumonia in cattle? Uh, we have viruses, um, typically IBR, RSV, PI3, they're some of the main viruses we'll see in cattle. Bacteria, then we have mycoplasma, uh, we have pasteurella, um, and we have parasites like lungworm. Um, so we've lots of, of pasteurella is now manhemia, sorry I, I often make that mistake. But So with bacteria, viruses and parasites, and they can cause pneumonia, okay? So it's very basic stuff I know, but you know, and everyone loves if I said, what's the best treatment for pneumonia? I mean, the treatments for pneumonia, particularly bacterial pneumonia, are antibiotics. That's a conversation we're trying to, I'm always trying to push the story of reducing antibiotic usage of farm. We have to, um, uh, but the, you know, antibiotics are part of the treatment protocol. Um, and I suppose, you know, what's the best antibiotic? Uh, when we think about antibiotics, they work in different ways. Different antibiotics with a different penetration into different tissues. They'll be broad spectrum or narrow. They'll have a short or a long window of activity. So we need something that's gonna get into the lungs. First of all, it's gonna penetrate uh, and have efficacy to the pathogens in the lungs. Uh, the second thing we need is for a period of time. So whether that's daily injections or a long acting medicine that will cover so we don't have recurrent uh, and that's a really important thing when you look at and I really say to farmers we need to get better at looking at treatments if you're repeating treatments on animals those treatments aren't working why aren't they working should you change them um, but one really key thing I keep banging on about the whole time is anti-inflammatories so anti-inflammatories are oh, we, people get confused between painkillers and anti-inflammatories anti-inflammatories will take down that inflammation in the lungs they'll take down temperatures so it's really important that we look at um, anti-inflammatory usage in pneumonia. Thinking in pneumonia is inflammation in lungs, particularly if we get in there early. Anti-inflammatories are underutilized. We tend to go to antibiotics too often on farm. 
but specific treatments you need to talk to your vet about. The key thing, and this is the word that everyone gets a little bit irritated about, is pneumonia is multifactorial. Uh, it's not a very straightforward disease, but in calves, like every disease and every infectious disease in farm, we're always balancing immunity and infection pressure. That's the amount of the virus, the bacteria, the circumstances really that allow the disease to proliferate. And immunity is our ability, uh, our animal's ability to fight those infections or those invading pathogens. Um, and I talk about the seesaw principle of always m managing these and if you think about calves immunity you cannot talk about colostrum enough you just cannot talk about it enough because it's key even with pneumonia um, and you think about even calf scar as I said in, in one of my other previous vlogs is that a calf scar leads to these issues as well because it lowers immunity so infection pressure um, like so if we think about immunity colostrum feeding uh, getting them right cold weather heat stress uh, the, the environment that the calves are in is really, really critical. And think about one of the greatest assets you can have in the fight of pneumo against pneumonia is fresh air in sheds, in particular if you're getting it indoors. If you're getting pneumonia outdoors, you need to look at other stressors and you need to potentially look at parasites as well. And I'm going to cover lungworm again in a lot more detail in another vlog. But if you look at indoors in the sheds, calves in pain, fresh air, getting fresh air in there. Sometimes we'll use mechanical fans or ventilation or tubes and that helps. But if we can get fresh air at calf level, it'll kill a lot of the pathogens, it'll reduce the spread. But we must remember, if you're looking at assessing ventilation in calf sheds for pneumonia, that calves spend 85 to 80% 80 of their time lying down, so they're quite low. Again, you don't want to have drafts on calves because that can cause problems. And again, space is important even with pneumonia because if we have calves that are, are very close together, the chances of stress and spread of disease are really important. So fresh air and pneumonia is really critical. Again, this is just brief principles. Stress, 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 okay? Um, I think stress is a massive factor in uh, calf pneumonia particularly uh, if we look at taking dairy calves and bring them to bee systems removing them you know so transport anything like that but if you look at dehorning as one stressor again anti-inflammatories i am a huge fan okay we all use local anesthetic and though for debugging or dehorning but anti-inflammatories are really really can help to reduce stress around that time so any factor that can affect calf uh, stress health uh, can open the door to pneumonia and you know we're hearing again a lot about vaccination uh, because of the challenges that are going on with coronavirus and that hunt for a vaccine so do vaccines work and I think yes vaccines work um, pneumonia vaccines and cattle work and calves work really well but they need to be used correctly uh, I've always found no matter what type of vaccine you use that you use it on healthy animals before the risk because the vaccine is stimulating or priming the immune system for when exposure does happen uh, and if that immune system is primed that memory is there you'll get a better response um, so vaccines are quite complicated or expensive but they have to be stored and administered correctly so depending on the age groups of calves you've often go up to nose and quite young calves I like intranasal vaccines there's some very new good new ones on the marketplace and they're getting good results on farm um, Intramuscular vaccines you can use maybe IBR live and some vaccines then are dead vaccines that require two shots so with calves that means that the cover is usually only about two three weeks after the second shot so there's lots of options around vaccines I think uh, you know there's so many I, I'm not going to go into tell people about the perfect vaccine any farm that I've got into um, we've used different vaccines at different times because of um, I suppose the age groups of calves the risks the pathogens that were there and I, I didn't mention uh, this and I should have is 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 a diagnosis to make a difference. You know, getting nasal swabs, getting a you know if you lose a calf at post mortem, find out what's causing your pneumonia because again that would influence uh, your choice of vaccination, your control program. So pneumonia is multifactorial. There's a lot of elements to it, but I suppose if I was thinking of key things, key absolutely key things is. Um, don't be focusing on the best treatments. Uh, treatments work when they're used correctly, they're there, but we don't want to be relying on them. It costs a lot of money through last performance. That's the big one, because the lungs don't heal. It is multifactorial. We want to reduce down infection pressure, and really, if you're reducing down the risk, keep other stressors, get colostrum right, feeding right, maximizing fresh air, and if you're struggling with pneumonia, get a good vaccination plan in place. That's, that's my top tips for pneumonia. Okay, thought for today today, very simple one. There's lots of information. Every time you open social media, every time you open a paper, particularly social media, there's all sorts of information around coronavirus. Everyone's struggling with that consumption and that 
the volume of information, it's creating a lot of fear. Um, we need to listen to trusted experts on this subject. Um, I've really just gone down to start minimizing down my, my exposure. I'm uh, in Ireland, I'm listening to RT1 News, I'm listening to reading the papers, I'm listening to good journalists, and I'm listening to the experts in our health service who are giving us the best advice. And that's my, 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 my thought for today. We can be overwhelmed with some of the theories, the knowledge, everyone's an epidemiologist now, uh, Go to the trusted sources, listen to the experts and to the journalists uh, in this country in particular. They have been doing a fantastic job, uh, so well done. So that's my thought for today.